Before complex computer models were available, the only way for engineers to test out a massive project was to make a model. A model just like this. John Bartel here, making a little pit stop at the Bay Model in Sausalito. In the 1940s and 50s, San Francisco was looking for a more reliable source of fresh water, and of all people, actor and theatrical producer John Reber came up with a wild idea to build two dams in the San Francisco Bay to keep out salt water. And his idea was to convert these into reservoirs. All right, freshwater reservoirs. U.S. Army Corps of Engineer Park Ranger Linda Holmes says converting the Salty Bay into a freshwater reservoir would have been the largest civil works project in the country's history and also would have drastically reshaped the Bay Area. So just this way the San Rafael Richmond Bridge would have been a dam and roughly where the Bay Bridge would have been a dam and then by filling in Berkeley and Emeryville and then creating a lock and gate system to connect the two dams so the ships could get up and over into the ports they needed to go. The project had a lot of support in California, but before the federal government authorized funding, they ordered the Army Corps of Engineers to build a giant model of the Bay Area's water system. It's very old, and uh, as you can see, it's not operating today because it's down for some repairs. Stretching over an acre and a half, the size of two football fields, the sculpted concrete model mimicked tides, currents, and river inflows. This was hand sculpted by a group of African Americans. They were referred to as molders. I like to lovingly refer to them as sculptors. Back in the 1950s, building giant models like this one was the only way to see if giant water projects would actually work. And that's a good thing they tested John Reber's idea. His math was a little bit off. And so the long and short of it is it probably would have flooded every community from South Bay all the way through here, all the way up to the Delta. John Reber's idea was quickly scrapped, but the Bay model as it's known today found a new purpose. So it attracted scientists and engineers and, and uh, college professors and students from all over the state to request use of the simulator to test theories of their own. The Bay model was used by scientists and engineers all the way up to the year 2000 to measure the effects of drought, flooding, dredging, oil spills, and shoreline development. Computers have since replaced the need for the Bay model, but today it provides students and visitors with a visual of Northern California's water system. From the Bay Model Visitor Center in Sausalito, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads.